everybody and welcome to part two of Georgia's Sea Turtles for Scoot School. Today I will be telling you about some of Georgia's sea turtle species. If you missed it, this was part two. We had part one the other day where we talked about the smallest species of sea turtles that can be found right here in coastal Georgia. Again, just as a little bit of a recap in case you missed our first video, there are seven species of sea turtles worldwide. And right here in Georgia, we are really lucky that we see five of those seven species. So the first part of our video covered the smallest ones, the Kemp's Ridley and the Hawksbill sea turtle. And today I will be telling you all about the loggerhead sea turtle and the green sea turtle. So to get started, I will talk about the loggerhead sea turtle. And these guys are going to be Georgia's most common species of sea turtle. When they are fully grown, they can get between three to four feet long and weigh two to 400 pounds. So it's almost as big as I am tall. And you'll notice that the loggerhead sea turtle's shell is pretty brown in color. Sometimes it can be really brown. Sometimes they're more reddish orange, but all of those colors are going to help these loggerhead sea turtles blend in or camouflage with their surrounding environment. Especially here in coastal Georgia, if you've ever been to our beaches, you know that our waters here are pretty murky and brown. You can hardly see your hand in front of your face, but that's perfect for these sea turtles. It will help them blend in with their environment. You'll also notice on this shell, there's a lot of barnacles. Loggerhead sea turtles have a lot of living creatures that can be on their shell. And this can be barnacles, algae, leeches, crabs, all of these things that live on a sea turtle's shell are called epibiota. Epi means on top of, biota means life. Put it together and you have life on top of, and in this case, it's life on top of a sea turtle shell. Those barnacles on top of a loggerhead shell will also help it camouflage with its surrounding environment, making it look like a rock if the turtle is just hanging out on the bottom, taking a rest. Loggerhead sea turtles are going to get their name because of their really big heads. This is not even an adult loggerhead skull. They can get a lot bigger than this, but you'll notice the loggerhead's head is really white. And that is where they get their name from because their heads look like logs. They are so big. And they are really large because they need a lot of muscle in there. So when I turn it around and you see right in between this V here, those really big holes are for muscles. And a loggerhead sea turtle needs really big muscles because it powers their jaw. When they crunch down on their food, they're looking for hard-shelled critters. Things like blue crabs, whelks, horseshoe crabs, all of these things are the favorite foods of a loggerhead sea turtle. This whelk is a type of sea snail in case you didn't know. It's also the state shell of Georgia, the knobbed well. And inside is that juicy snail that the loggerhead wants to get at. But their jaws are so powerful that they can crunch through this shell as easily as if it were a potato chip to us. So imagine that, trying to crunch through this with just your teeth. You'd probably end up at the dentist. But our loggerheads, they're pros at it. Now our loggerhead sea turtles, like I mentioned earlier, they're the most common species that we get here along the Georgia coast. In fact, just last summer here on Jekyll Island, we had 199 sea turtle nests all laid by loggerheads in 2019. We wish they would have given us just one more for an even 200, but we can't be too picky. That was our second highest nesting total that we've ever counted right here on Jekyll Island and the highest nesting total since the Sea Turtle Center has been open. So we were really busy last year and really excited. In part, we were really excited because these sea turtles are coming back from the brink of extinction. Loggerhead sea turtles, as with the rest of Georgia's five species of sea turtles, are all listed on the Endangered Species Act. Loggerhead sea turtles are listed as threatened. And that's in part because in the 1970s, loggerhead sea turtles would end up in shrimp nets and they would drown. Sea turtles, they do have lungs. They have to come up to the surface to breathe air. So if they get stuck at the end of a net and that net isn't pulled up in time, that turtle will drown. So 
So thankfully, a local fisherman from Darien, Georgia, figured out a solution to this problem. He developed the turtle excluder device for shrimp nets. And this is a big metal grate that goes inside of a shrimp net. And that way the shrimp can pass through that grate. But if a big animal like a sea turtle hits those bars in the grate, it opens up an escape hatch for that turtle. And then they can continue swimming on their turtly awesome lives in the ocean without drowning in the end of that net. So turtle excluder devices are required now in U.S. waters for shrimpers. And so if you want to do your part in helping save our loggerhead sea turtles, all we ask of you is to buy wild Georgia shrimp. Don't buy imported shrimp. If you stick to locally sourced shrimp, you know that a turtle excluder device was used and you are doing your part to help save these creatures. Now moving on to our next species of sea turtle, we have our green sea turtles. And again, don't let this shell size fool you. Green sea turtles do get larger than our loggerhead friends, but this shell that I have here is a juvenile shell. When they are fully grown, they will be up to five feet long, so that's as tall as I am, and they can weigh up to 500 pounds. So again, this shell that I have is nowhere near an adult size. But you'll see on this shell that they are also kind of a brownish color, and it's a little bit hard to see on the one I'm holding, but our green sea turtles have a really cool sunburst pattern on their shell with flecks of yellow or gold coming out from each of their scoops or each of the individual scales on their shell. And this is because, again, like for our loggerheads, that sunburst pattern will help them camouflage in with their surrounding environment. These guys like to hang out in seagrass beds. So if you can picture a beautiful seagrass bed in shallow water with the sun's rays coming down through the ocean water, the sunburst pattern on a sea turtle shell mimics those rays of sunlight coming in through the waters. And these guys love to hang out in seagrass beds because that is their preferred type of food. Green sea turtles don't get their name from the color that they are on the outside of their shell. Instead, they're going to get their name from the color of their fatty tissues on the inside of their body. And that's because they love to eat green stuff like sea grasses and algae. And all of that chlorophyll that turns the plants green also turns the insides of our green sea turtles green. And when you look at their skulls, green sea turtles, again, they're a bigger turtle when they reach adulthood, but their skulls are much smaller than those loggerhead sea turtles that we looked at a few moments ago. And that's because they don't need all that muscle power. They're just chewing on some veggies. So if you look at their mouth though, they do have something that loggerheads don't have. They have a serrated jaw or bumpy ridges along that jaw that look a lot like teeth. And these ridges will act a lot like teeth as well and help them tear off all those sea grasses growing on the ocean floor. Because these green sea turtles like to hang out in seagrass beds, which are typically in really shallow coastal waters, they are often at a higher risk of being struck by boats. Boat strikes are the most common reason why we get sea turtles into our facility. And it's not just the green sea turtles that can be hit by boats, it can be any of our sea turtle species. But green sea turtles are most commonly affected species here with those boat strike injuries. So right now in our hospital, we have a few patients that were struck by boats. We have glitter mittens, Quasimodo, Tsunami, and a couple of others um, out there who came in with these really severe boat strike injuries. Sea turtles are really resilient. They can recover from boat strike injuries, but sometimes they will succumb to those injuries as well. So it's really important that we all do our part if we are out enjoying coastal waters on a boat whether you're driving that boat or if you're just a passenger on it, be aware of your surroundings. Look out for a sea turtle that might be coming up for a breath of air. And if you are the one driving that boat, make sure you're following the posted speed limits and no wake zones. And that will all help these sea turtles out and prevent them from being struck by the boat's propeller. And finally, if you do ever find a sea turtle that is in distress, maybe it's been hit by a boat or it's washed up on the beach, 
What you can do if you are here in Georgia is call the sea turtle hotline from the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. And that phone number is 1-800-2-SAVE-ME. And that'll make sure that the turtle will get help. If it's alive, it'll probably come right here to us where we will hopefully rehabilitate it and get it back out into the wild. So with that, I hope you have enjoyed learning about our loggerhead sea turtles and green sea turtles. Our last part of our three-part installment of Georgia sea turtles will air on Friday, March 27th. So be sure to tune back in then to learn about our good friends, the largest species of sea turtle, the leatherback. Thank you so much. Have a good day.